The more that I use Gutenberg, the more that I realize there are lots of shortcomings in the tool set that I'm used to moving from something like Elementor Pro. One of the key things is the ability to create your own custom loops and design how they look inside the Gutenberg editor itself. Today, we're gonna to be looking at a free plugin called Custom Layouts. Now, this is from the same people that brought you Search and Filter Pro. So we're gonna take a look at this. It's completely free. It's still fairly early in its development, but it does include quite a lot of really nice features. As always, as we go through, I'll give you my opinions on what I think the shortcomings are, the strengths are, and then at the end, we'll take a look at rounding up my thoughts and opinions. So I've created a test demo site, and I've already gone ahead and created a really simple layout using the plugin that we're gonna take a look at. As you can see, it's what you'd expect from a typical loop. It's pretty basic what I've done, but I wanna show you how to do it, and then you can get stuck in if you think this is something that's useful to you. Okay, so this is the kind of thing that you can create very quickly and very easily. And we can edit this from various different ways. We can insert it into our designs by using short codes, by using the normal widgets that you have as part of Gutenberg itself. Okay, so once you've installed the plugin, you can see we get a new entry now called Custom Layouts. Inside there, we've got three different options, your layouts, your templates, and your settings. Let's quickly look at the settings because there's not a lot to see inside there. What we do have though is the ability to set things up based upon their breakpoints on the different devices. So your medium, your small, your extra small, and so on. You can also choose to regenerate the CSS if you see something funky happening. So like I say, at this point in time, really quite minimal settings. So moving on from the settings section, we've got layouts and templates. So what are the difference? Well, layouts are basically the layout of your loop. In other words, once you've designed your cards using the templates feature, then the layouts is where you'll create your grid layout. So let's quickly go and take a look at what I've done. We're gonna recreate all these kinds of things from scratch. You'll see how it all works anyway. So this is what you're kind of going to see. You can see this is an example of what our layout is gonna look like with multiple posts inserted. And we've got a range of controls over the right-hand side, which again, like I say, we'll take a look at. You've also got the short code inside here. So if you want to use the short code to insert this into various different parts of your site, you could do that using that short code. Let's hop into the templates now. And inside the templates, you can see we've got my post template. And if we open that up, you see this is where you'll create your actual loop item. So again, you can see we've got options down the right-hand side, and we've also got a series of different widgets or different elements that we can bring in to create this particular loop item, this card, whatever you're gonna wanna call it. So let's go ahead and create something new. Let's create a new template. We'll give it a name. Once you've given it a name, you can see now we've got basically a placeholder layout. This is where we can now go ahead and flesh this out to get exactly what we want. If we look on the left-hand side, first of all, open that up, you can see we can go ahead and we can insert all the core elements you would expect to see as part of a typical loop item. Your title, excerpt, author, those kinds of things, including things like taxonomy, post type, and those things. So pretty cool to see that. We can simply do things like drag items in. So we can say we'll drag a title in, there's our title. We wanna drag an excerpt in, we can drop that underneath if we want to, and you can see that now pulls the information in. And if we want, let's just add in a link to create a button underneath that. And if we wanna do something like using a custom field, we could do that as well if we're using custom fields. So if we add a custom field in, you can see we can enter the custom field information. So if we are using ACF or something like that, we could drop in that relevant information inside there. You can see over on the right-hand side, it gives us control over that particular element or widget. Let's remove that because we're not actually gonna be using that in this section. Okay, so we've now created a really basic layout. Once we've done that, we can now go ahead and control the container and we can control each individual element inside our loop container. So for example, if we click on the image, you can see now the options at the top change. We can click the first one and this allows us to then control exactly where we want to focus on this particular image. So this is quite a nice inclusion to be able to very easily focus on exactly where you want in the image. And speaking of the image, if we take a look at the right-hand side now, you can see this particular element gives us a lot of control. We can choose the size of the image we want to use from any of those that are created through our theme and also through WordPress itself. So let's go for medium large if you want to have a larger version. You can then control the container sizing. We can do a natural fit, which kind of just contains it based upon the aspect ratio and so on. Oh, sorry, based upon the size of the image and the scale of the image. Or we can go in and set a specific aspect ratio that we want to work with. And inside there, we've now got 21 by nine right the way through to one to ones, one to twos and so on. And this is where it becomes a bit more useful then to use these kind of alignment options. But I'm gonna set this back to natural fit. 
and you can set this to be linked to your post when you are within a new window if you want to control the colors the border the spacing and those kinds of things all options inside here we can link these together or unlink them and control the margins and the padding independently or as a group we'll leave those as they are let's this time select the text and you can see now that the context toolbar at the top changes so we'll say we could set this to be centered if we wanted to we can adjust things like the width we can position this higher or lower in the stacking order but you can also just simply drag and drop these into position if you want to so really easy really intuitive way of working then we can go ahead and control exactly how this looks so again we've got a series of options on the right hand side and this is kind of where we come into one of the limitations of this particular plugin and something that i'd like to see them open up a little bit more so ross if you're listening to this or watching this please give us google fonts because at the moment we're kind of limited to a smaller selection or subsection of fonts, most of which, or if not all of which, I would assume are web safe fonts. So whether this is a limitation of Gutenberg itself or whether it's a limitation of what's been implemented inside the plugin, I'm not 100% sure, but it would be nice to be able to have all those Google fonts because if we're linking this particular plugin into a theme or into some blocks that we might be using like Cadence or Stackable or so on, it would be nice to be able to have full control over the typography so it matches our entire site. So let's just set this to something like Arial if we want to. We'll set our font size and we'll set this to be medium. And if we want to customize this, we could do that. So we could set that to 18. And again, I would like to see the ability to control more of the actual fonts. So things like the actual weight of the font, those kinds of things. If you want to make things uppercase, lowercase, you know, capitalize those kinds of things. So it'd be great to see that. We've got the option to switch then to hover. If we want to adjust this, we can adjust it inside there. And we've got full control then over text color, background colors, and so on, border, spacing, those kinds of things. So if, for example, if we come into here, let's make a bit more spacing on the left and right hand sides. And you can see that gives us a bit more spacing so we get more breathing space on there. If we go into advanced, this is basically where we can add in additional CSS classes. So if we wanted to target these with our own custom classes, we could do that inside our theme, inside WordPress itself, or by using a tool like CSS, uh, sorry, CSS Hero. So pretty cool. Same kind of thing goes then when we look, take a look at the actual body text. So again, we can select that. We can also go ahead and limit the actual manual excerpt strength uh, length. So for example, if you don't use excerpts when you're creating content, you just literally create the content. This will allow you to have that in there and then control the actual number of words that are gonna be used. So you can see we can increase this if you want to. So for larger designs, you might wanna have more content inside there. And you can do things like hide the theme, read more link if your theme overrides what's being created inside you. So again, all pretty cool. And again, the typography, I would love to see to have more control over this. So we can adjust things like the line height, but we can't adjust things like the weight and so on. Color, again, we do have control over this, so we can change the colors on there and change background colors, those kinds of things. Finally, in this example, let's take a look at our button. So we'll click on our read more button. And again, we've got control over this. So we can set this to be centered if we want to. We can change the background colors, the typography colors. So let's just change that over and we'll have clear on there. So our text color, sorry, it's gonna be black. This is gonna be clear, there we go. Now, when we create this, we can create a border around it, but we don't have the ability to create borders, top, bottom, left, and right independently. So again, this is one of those little things, it might seem silly, but when you've got a design like the one that I've used, it just simply uses on the links a, a single underline underneath the actual button itself. And I'd like to replicate that inside this design, but I can't, I can only set a border around the entire button. So I'd like to see that change. We can set radiuses and border colors and so on, and we can set spacing up inside here as well. So if we wanted to increase this, we could easily do that. And again, we've got control over margins and so on. So let's just say we want to put a bit of space underneath. There we go. So we've now created a bigger button. So that's how you, you edit the elements. But if you select the container, you can see we can adjust the actual container width and control how that looks as well. So at the moment, this is set to 250 pixels wide. But let's say that I'm gonna be working on design where it's gonna be around about 400 on the desktop and I'm targeting the desktop. Well, I can adjust that width on there. I can also adjust things like to hide and show the featured image. I might not want that included. And the image position is chosen inside there as well. We can adjust, put a background image in and we can select the source from none or featured image. And again, you've got your colors then for your backgrounds and so on. We're gonna set the border on this to have nothing on it whatsoever. And the spacing, we can adjust the spacing on there. And we've got control over the padding. And again, we can adjust this by unlinking it and create them 
all independent of each other. So really, really simple setup. Works very, very similar to what you're already used to, just not using, you know, sort of like elemental widgets. We're using kind of built-in Gutenberg-y type widgets. And once we've done that, we can hit publish on there. Again, we've got a short code for this particular template. But now we've created our design, we can go over to our layout. And inside our layout, let's go ahead and create a new layout. We'll call this demo loop. Once we do that, it'll pull in the default layout, which is already created as part of this plugin. But we can change that. If we come to the right hand side, you can see we've got our post loop currently using uh, default. We can change that and we'll say this is going to be loop item template, for example. And once we do that, you can see that now pulls the design in for us. And now we can control the layout of the template. So the nice thing is we can also control this based upon the device that we're viewing it on. So currently we're looking at large, but you can see there's our four different breakpoint options. And if we switch into any of these, we could then adjust how many items are going to be on there, the spacing, those kinds of things. So we'll leave that as it is. You can control the column layout inside here if you want to. So you can see we can set this to less or more, depending upon the design you're working with. We can adjust our spacing as well. So let's just increase this to something like 15 pixels, gives a bit more breathing space around them. And the nice thing that I like about this is that if I want to edit that template that I've used to create each individual loop item, I can simply hit edit from here, or I can click add new, and that will take me over and I can start editing. So that's pretty cool, or I can create a new one from inside here. So you kind of have a nice bit of round trip, shall we say. You can then go ahead and set these things up to use masonry. If you've got different column heights, you can set that up on there and you can see we can also set pagination. If we disable masonry, we can set equal row heights, fill last row, those kinds of things. So again, quite nice. If we come down then, we've got control over the query. In other words, what information we want to pull in. So at the moment, this is set to posts, but we can click inside there and we can choose from pages. And I'm assuming that if we use custom post types, they would also be listed inside here as well. We leave it set to post, that's perfectly fine. You can also go ahead and restrict taxonomy. So if you only want to show certain information in this particular loop, you could do that. We can go to categories and we can say, I only want to show news items. And there we go, there's just our news items. Or I can add extra ones in, so I might say just news items and tutorials, and that's all that will be listed inside there. We'll remove those, so we'll have everything. You'll also see we can do the same kind of thing with tags. So if you use tags in your designs, you can set those up and you can use those inside you to filter this out as well. And finally, you've also got formats. So if you have a theme that supports formats, like video formats and those kinds of things, you can set this up to choose which formats you want. And you can combine all of these together so you can get really quite granular in exactly what you want to show inside your loop. You can restrict your authors if you want to and specify only specific authors can be shown up inside you. And you can also do things like how you want to order these by the publish date, or you can see you've got a lot of different options inside you, including manual ordering. And we can set your typical descending order, ascending order, post per page and offset if you want to create multiple designs. You know, there's lots of options inside there. And again, inside the advanced, we've got that option to create additional CSS classes that apply to this particular template. And finally, all we're going to do is we're going to give this a name and we're going to call this. Okay, so we can publish that. We can also then use the short code again, but let's just hit publish on there. And now once we've published that, we can go ahead and use this inside any of our Gutenberg pages. So let's go over to our pages. Let's add a new page in. We're going to call this my loop page. And underneath, we're simply going to go ahead and insert that loop. So if we come to the plus on here and we'll go for posts, you can see we have posts layout. If we select that, that will insert the posts layout for us. And now we can just go ahead and customize this. And you also notice that even though we set a lot of options up inside the template panel itself, we still have control over a lot of that inside Gutenberg as well. This makes it really, really easy to customize everything. So let's just change the post layouts and we're going to say we're going to use the my post template, for example, you can see that's the one design, or I can come in and say the loop item template, the one we've just created. There's our second design. We can adjust the columns inside here. So we'll set this to be two, for example. And again, you've got your spacing, you can control that, your masonry, equal height, pagination, all those kinds of good things. So very easy to work with. So what are my thoughts? I think it's a great solid starting point. There's still scope for more control over the design aesthetics, especially when it comes to things like the borders, the typography that can be used, those kinds of things. But if you're looking for a plugin that gives you the ability to create your own custom loops, insert those into your page designs, customize various different aspects of it, even have multiple different designs, I think this is a really good option and one I would recommend taking a look at. 
Now, as always, if you found the video useful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, well, hit the thumbs down button twice as that worked pretty well too. All applicable links are in the description below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tets. Until next time, take care.